Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at an example for rotational motion that we're going to solve both using graphical method and using algebraic method. Now of course the algebraic method we're going to use the equation kinematics but can we also use the graphical method and if we're going to use the graphical method we usually want to start with the velocity versus time graph of course in this case the angular velocity versus time graph. They tell us that the original omega, the starting omega is equal to zero, so it starts from rest, and that it will have traveled 180 radians during the second five seconds. So they don't tell us how far it goes during the first five seconds, but during the second five seconds covers a distance of 180 radians. They want to know the angle of acceleration, the angle of velocity after five seconds, and the angle of velocity after 10 seconds. So if we graph this on a graph, a velocity versus time graph or angle of velocity versus time graph of course we get a, a line a, a straight line a slope and the slope is equal to the angle of acceleration also notice that if we take a look at the slope notice that the distance traveled during the first five seconds must be only one-third the distance traveled during the second five seconds which can simply be shown uh, geometrically and so therefore we can assume then that if the angular distance traveled during the second five seconds is 180 radians, then the angular distance traveled during the first five seconds must be one third of that, or 60 radians for the first five seconds. Then, if I use the equation that the distance traveled is one half alpha times t squared, and now we know that the distance traveled during the first five seconds is 60 radians, then two times 60 radians divided by five seconds squared is 4.8 radians per second squared. So from that, we get, our angular, uh, we get our angular acceleration. Then once we know the angle acceleration, we can simply say that the angular velocity is the acceleration times time. So after five seconds, you're moving at 24 radians per second, and after 10 seconds, you're moving at double the speed of 48 radians per second. If you're going to use the equation kinematics, you should write all three of them down, and then you can see which one of those equations will give you the most information. If we go for the first equation, we plug in what we know. This is for the second five seconds, we travel 180 radians, and the initial theta, we can just call that zero, we can call that the starting point, and then the final, the initial omega, well, it's whatever it is, the initial omega is omega sub naught, times time, so that would be 5 times initial omega, plus half alpha times t squared, so t squared is 25, times 1 half is 12.5. So we don't know the initial omega, and we don't know the angle acceleration for that second 5 seconds. Then if we use the second equation, we realize that the omega after the final 5 seconds is going to be twice the omega of the initial 5 seconds. Notice that the angle of velocity is a linear quantity. So whatever velocity we have after 5 seconds will be going twice as fast after 10 seconds because it's a, it's, a linear, it's a linear relationship. So double the time, double the velocity. And so then we can say that the final velocity will be twice initial velocity, so here we write that, plus alpha t. So then we solve for initial velocity, initial angular velocity, which is alpha times t, which is 5 seconds. Then we replace that into our equation right here. Omega is going to be replaced by 5 times alpha. And then we solve this for alpha being 4.8 radians per second squared. So you can see that you can solve it using either method. Sometimes you can solve it using both methods at the same time. So that is how we solve a otherwise very difficult problem by using the graphical method and using the relationship that the distance traveled during the second five seconds is three times the distance traveled during the first five seconds and here we can use the principle that the velocity at the end of the 10 second period will be twice the velocity at the end of the five second period because we have constant acceleration and that is how it's done.